Hello guys and welcome back. So let's uh, set up a pass for just the water. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to call this water shading. And what I want is I want just the uh, fluid mesh. I'm going to set this geometry to be matte and the lower as environment as matte as well. And let's do a quick test with this. Actually, I'm going to lower the resolution even more. And while this is going, I'm going to go to the material and I'm going to create a, a material surface builder, an empty node basically. Okay, so this is the water. You can see it's matted out. And uh, yeah, this is, we're going to focus on this. So let's call this water shader. And I'm going to dive inside. And I'm going to use a, uh, uh, a simpler shader for this. We can use the principal shader core, but I'm actually going to use both of these guys should give us the same result. I'm going to use uh, something even uh, simpler, which is the classic shader core in this case. And I'm going to put down a compute lighting. We need the layer. And let's plug these guys. And what I want to do is I'm, I'm going to give it a slight tint of diffuse, something like that. I'm going to set it to 0.1. We don't need any subsurface. For the base reflection, we're going to keep the defaults as they are. And for the refraction, I'm going to turn on refraction and I'm going to set the refraction color to have a slight tint of blue. The refraction roughness is, let's see, the refraction roughness is set to zero, which means this is a pure clear water. I would like to have a little bit of blur on that. So I'm gonna set this to 0 0.05. And for the opacity, I'm gonna leave that with the, uh, as the default. And let's assign this I'm going to make a copy of this a floating tab of this. And the way to do that is right click act, uh, parameter parameters. And I'm going to scale it down and set it to always on top. And let's go back to the shader. And right now it's rendering. You can see we're seeing through the statue has those colors and I'm going to remove them. I'm going to delete the attribute from the statue, the color attribute, so we just get white. And you can see everything is working as expected. Now, I think there is a little bit too much diffuse here. Uh, maybe not so much. I think it's fine. But we're going to change the diffuse anyway. We're going to do something uh, a little bit tricky. Now, let's go to the statue and fix this. I'm going to add a Actually, let's go to the statue itself. This is the statue. I'm going to disable these guys. Okay. And uh, let's go back to the shader. And I'm going to copy this copy this guy and actually I'm going to create a completely new one. I'll explain why in a second. So this is working and I'm going to call this diffuse testing. And let me bring a render that we were looking at. So remember we uh, stored a velocity attribute and a vorticity attribute. If we look at this render here, this has no foam. There's no foam at all in this pass. But if you look closer, well, you don't have to look closer, but just looking at this, you see we're getting this white foaming change when uh, the surface, when the water is moving too fast or when there is a vorticity. This is a crucial part 
and rendering the water because it's going to help blend with the uh, with the particles which are super white so having this part uh, helps with the blend in drastically this is a crucial uh, to nicely blend in the various elements as well as it's adding a lot of uh, cold visual to the overall water even this by itself looks like it has foam uh, or white water on it but there is none it's just a shading trick that we're going to create now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bind import the velocity attribute so this is a vector and let me scale this down B and I'm also going to import the vorticity and vorticity is a float obviously we can do this in the uh, in SOPS to visualize this, which we've done last week, but I want to do it in the shader to show you how uh, how this data looks like. And let's take the vorticity. I'm going to add a fit range, as we remember, uh, the the range is quite big, so we're going to remap it. For this one, I'm going to set it to zero point as uh, three and twenty five. Okay, and I'm going to set this as the diffuse color. So diffuse. And let's hit render. And while this is going, uh, it's rendering here. So once it's done, I'll, I'll show you guys the render. For the velocity, I'm going to compute the length because it's a vector, as always. And then I'm going to create a fit range. And I want to fit the velocity between 0.1 and 0.5. Now these range ranges I've tweaked previously and uh, uh, you guys can also do this in SOPS to visualize it properly uh, and uh, I've done a couple of tests in the in the APR to find the correct values and I'm not gonna repeat the same process so this is the render with the vorticity you can see we're getting much brighter diffuse and almost none when the surface is flat and this is very very important now what I also would like to add to this is the velocity so let's connect this and take a look at the velocity and then we're going to add combine both of them together we're going to add the velocity length and the vorticity together and use this uh, as a to drive the diffuse amount or the diffuse color cool so this is the velocity you can see it's a uh, it's uh, visible everywhere pretty much so we could go a little bit more aggressive with the range if we wanted to let's add these two guys and i'm going to set the diffuse to 1.25 the diffuse intensity so this is the color and the diffuse intensity is 0.125 we can uh, we will have separate passes for this so separate av that we can control it later and compositing if we wanted to. Cool. Okay, and let's go back to the shader that is working. And I'm going to connect this diffuse color. I'm going to set the diffuse amount to 125. I'm actually going to add a small tint which I didn't have before. But I think it's uh, will be nice to have. So I'm going to add a color correct node, which allows me to. Uh, it does not. Sorry, I'm going to use a multiply here, and let's create a constant. And this constant, I'm going to set to color. So image color. I'm going to set it something like this just a small tint and that's going to go into the sorry I need to swap this because uh, we're going to multiply a color by a float and then this is the diffuse color ignore the tint there it's just this is how it should look like the UI but everything is coming from here. I'm going to delete this and let's do a quick render. 
with this. Now, obviously, we had a refle reflection in the previous shader as well. I should have turned that off. But the idea is we can use this information to drive a various thing in the shader to m make it more compelling. For example, we can change the refraction co color based on this information as well. So we can take we can take this float value and use it to mix between two colors. Okay, let's say uh, 3D RGB color. And we're going to use this information to drive the refraction color of the water itself. And there is so many ideas that you can drive, change the reflection amount, you can change the roughness of the water, for example, so that it becomes blurrier when there is more foam or the water is moving faster you can drive any control you want from the shader okay and this is how it looks like now okay let's go back to to this and i'm going to copy the refraction color that we had and i'm going to paste it here paste copied values and i'm actually going to give it a little bit more hue and saturation and I want to uh, have another one something like this so this value is going to be used to mix between these two guys let's go to the refraction refraction color and use this guy okay I think I'm going to increase the water amount a little bit. And maybe the refraction amount is quite, I think it's too much. One is 100% uh, ref uh, refractive, so it's very transparent. I'm going to set the refraction amount to 0.925 just to lower it a bit. And you can see here the change already uh, using that color. Maybe you should increase the diffuse amount a bit as well. Okay, cool. So one thing that is uh, very compelling and uh, very important to create is the the thickness or the the fake scattering that we see. With this, when we look at this volume of water here, when we have rays traveling. Let me, I want to show the mesh by itself. Okay. When we have something like this, uh, currently we're ignoring all these surfaces, which is fine. But when we have a, a water like this, it has volume, it has thickness. So we see some kind of uh, fake volume or fake scattering happening, especially if you have sand inside or some uh, uh, or dirt or any mixture of material, they're going to affect how the light gets absorbed and refracted. So we should get different uh, uh, refracted rays based on the depth of this um, of the water. So if a ray hits uh, reaches up until here inside the surface and it gets reflected it refracted it should give us a different color than the one here okay and to create this fake volume or fake scattering effect we need actually to render a volume pass we need to use volume rendering inside this to create this complex visual which cannot be achieved using just a flat surface okay so this is what we have currently okay we started off with this, and uh, after a few tweaks, we are here now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly increase the render settings. Let's copy this. I'm going to set this to yeah, 1280 to 720. I'm going to set this to 5 and 5. And I'm going to turn on allow motion blur because uh, we want to see how motion blur affects this. And for a mantra to properly use the velocity motion blur, we need to go under sampling, which we learned already, and turn on geometry velocity blur. And uh, let's do a render. 
and in the next video we're going to learn how to render the fake scattering for the water. Thank you guys for watching and see you in a bit.